second drone went down in the last week. The boys found this stuff called the old man's beard lichen and they made themselves mustaches. They were just playing like kids again. Welcome to another episode of The Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip. That's disgusting. <laughs> So we're exploring the back roads of BC here and uh, we're running the drone and it looks like it might have caught on a tree and crashed but Pete's wa walking back to see what's up. It looks like it dropped. It dropped. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Both arms are broken and I, the battery's out. That's not good. I think the arm just broke off that. Oh my word. Wow. That's nice. cracked right in the body. Cracked on the body, cracked the both rotors. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. It's twice that I've landed. It's landed itself into a tree. It just says landing. Automatically lands into a tree. Well, we can't cry over split milk. I could cry. I could cry. <laughs> That's so dumb, actually. Like, I just can't even believe it. So right now we're on a logging road called Set Settler's Road and we've been driving for about 40 minutes now just down it. We had planned to take all these routes down to the Kootenai River and it's a bunch of rapids that you can park right up next to and tons of campsites that you drive up all off-road into the mountains to get to a campsite too and we wanted to check them all out but this time of year even though we are coming into well obviously we're in spring coming into summer almost uh, there's still like five feet of snow on some of the trails all mounted up and tons of ice even just on this road It's really icy So there's no real way for us to get off of this road, but we're gonna keep exploring forward and see what we can find uh, And just check it out yeah. I'll walk and see uh, What the snow is like in ice and everything One little note Careful, it's icy not too bad. I think we'd dig pretty deep into it. But. They just, it looks like they just went in a little bit cloud yeah. and then it stops steep. What's it like? Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of deep in places, but I don't, I think it's, it'd be pretty easily managed. And the snow here is pretty hard, which could mean it's slippery, but it's uh, too warm for it to be icy. Is that fun? Is that fun? Yeah. So the, the snow is 
fairly deep and it's got a nice thick layer of ice underneath so it's not ideal it's really easy to get stuck but we're just going to be bold and press on here and just trying to make it down to the river you can see it's not that far if you look on the gps the kootenai river runs down in in here and we can see the little path going in there's a couple of different options i think we'll stay to the left here if we don't get stuck if we do Time for winches and max tracks. All right, let's try it. All right, so a minute ago I was talking about how all these trails are too filled up with snow to drive on. We found one that seems like a snow plow came in about 20 feet into it and then it goes back to that snow, but it's not as deep as the other places. And since it's probably about plus 16 today, this is all turned to packing snow rather than powder and ice. It still is quite slippery, but it at least packs down and becomes a pretty solid trail to drive on. So. We have Vandy just sitting up here waiting so that we don't have two vehicles uh, that could potentially slide into each other and get stuck. We've got just Worsley plowing a trail, just going back and forth, um, trying to get a good uh, track for the tires to go in. But yeah, this is going to be fun. It's going to be cool to take the two Arctic Jeeps out on a bit of an Arctic trail. This leads down to the Kootenai River. Should be beautiful. See how deep that is, that's why it's doing that. <laughs> yeah, so we're kind of bottoming out. It's, it's, I don't know. I could probably ram it, but I'm not really into that. I don't think that's gonna be the best way to do it. So I'm just gonna try to back out without getting stuck. Maybe in another week we can try this camping spot. Yeah, I think if we keep up with this warm weather, it's gonna melt down fast. So the plan was, I found a site that was in this loop, it's called Horseshoe Rapids, uh, but these trails are all, these little black dotted lines are all like what you see up here. Very, very deep snow and some drifting and things like that. But I, when it melts off and if we're still in this area, I can't wait to explore all these dotted lines. They just go on forever into the mountains here. But for now, we're trying to back out of this little guy here and get back on the main dirt road there. So what's the plan now? Uh, we'll just drive a bit farther, see if we can find a place with a nice view of the mountains and uh, some sunlight and we'll make a coffee and then we'll head back. Sounds like a plan. So our little plan to go into the snow there didn't really work out. It's, uh, we started scraping our diff and everything and even with us packing, like moving in and then going back to pack the snow down to make a better trail, just kept getting deeper and deeper every single run. and. Uh, it was a good four feet until you touch bottom, so we'd be sitting up on our chassis. The wheels would be free floating. Wouldn't be too much fun. I'm sure we could get out. We've got our max tracks, dead men, and two winches, but uh, it's just not worth it. You know, we'll end up just breaking stuff just for the sake of trying it. So we're gonna continue up on this log road, as Dad said. Let's find a nice place, a good view, and then make some coffee and then head back home. It's fun exploring these things. Probably try to do this as often as we can to see if we can't find any good trails or if anything clears up. Lando, come on. Why are you in there? quite a while now driving up this road we've been looking for a spot with a bit of a mountain view and uh, we we're just, just discussing if we were gonna turn around or not and you just exploded on all sides there's beautiful mountain peaks it's absolutely gorgeous where's Pete Lando. where's Pete Fish. Yeah, that smells fun. Is that salmon? Must be. Wow. Copper dog. Smoked salmon. Fish. Some, yeah, it's salmon. Wow. That's cool. Does it keep forever? Probably. Try that. 
The old bus is full. Mmm. It's actually really, really, really good. Wow. It's almost like jerky salmon. This was a little gift from the, the fine folks in Alaska at Northern Knives. And that looks like some beautiful smoked salmon. You can also get yourself a Epic Family Road Trip knife. This thing is just a really well-built utility knife. Extremely sharp and strong and durable. Just good for all uh, usages. Um, even kill a bear with it. Boy. You like it? So we found a, a little clearing here, which is kind of nice. It's been a lot of forest all the way, and this allows us to see the mountain peaks in the distance. It's a beautiful spot, and it also gives us full access to the sun. And, oh man, you guys feel that? After uh, being up here in kind of cold weather for the last couple of weeks, that hot sun is amazing. The snow is going to be melting off over the next week or so, I think. Although we're not from BC, so we don't know how it works, but I think, uh, similar to Ontario, when that hot sun starts hitting, it's going to start melting really quick, and that might give us access to some of the, some of the trails that come off of this side road. So make sure you stick around. We're going to do a little more exploring up here in British Columbia, Canada. Brought this down in New Mexico a couple of weeks ago. It's funny how things change. <laughs> One minute we're in New Mexico, expecting to be in the southwest for the whole winter. A few days later, we're up in Canada. But I hope all of you guys are uh, practicing good social distancing. I know we sure are. We haven't seen a soul all day. But um, yeah, staying away from crowds, not going to parties or groups where there's groups of people. That's what it's all about. Not necessarily just sitting inside your house, unless you're in certain parts of the country um, where that's mandatory. Up here, it's just you just got to stay away from people. So you don't infect them and you don't get infected yourself. We're in grizzly bear country and we're more likely to see a grizzly bear than another human. Good? Good this. Good boy! Get fish for being good. Oh. I could have that. He's so chill. Oh, I'd be like that. Yeah, exactly. Incredible. Come on. Up, up. We're going down. Um, just as a safety thing, when we're here on dirt trails, we just like to, uh, before heading onto the road, clean up our license plates and things. All right, so we just wrapped up driving through those roads today. We're back on the highway, heading back to our apartment. That was a lot of fun. We got to see a bunch and it was really great to be back in the Jeeps on some actual dirt roads and trails. It was actually really good to see all that though. It kind of gives us an idea of how we might want to travel back to the island, all the way across Canada, back to Ontario. And I think that'd be an epic way to do it, at least as far as we can. But yeah, good day on the road. It's March 20th, and this is the day we leave for Ontario. Uh, Jeeps are pretty much all packed. We've got a, a bit more to do to, just to bring down from the condo in the background there. And then we're heading out. We're pretty excited. Um, done our quarantine and all that stuff, so cannot wait to get back on the road. You excited to hit the road? Excited to get back in the Jeep? All right, the road 
is unplowed pretty deep, but we're gonna give it a try. We're just heading along the trail here. Uh, first day out, it's really nice. But as I was walking around filming, I noticed that there is a lot of old man beard lichen on these trees, which is a fire tender. I went, I went into a lot of detail on uh, what this stuff is and how well it works in our four tenders video. But this stuff is really cool. You can see here, there's just a ton of it on all of these branches. So I'm just collecting as much as we can for fire tonight and also just to uh, store in my bag for use in different times. Really, really cool stuff though.
this is uh, Pete's trying his best to see where our second drone went down in the last week. We just bought a brand new one. We were flying over, somehow lost, lost, we lost it, and it had to land itself somewhere, and it could be in the forest, could be in the river, it could be hopefully on the road somewhere. We're gonna drive down and check it out, and uh, let's just hope for the best. But that card, the SD card on that, had all our footage from yesterday and the day before. And it was probably our best footage yet. It was, it was incredible footage, a beautiful camp spot last night. Uh, it, it's just, I don't even know what to say. It's such a bad uh, scenario right now, but we're gonna drive back and just, Hope and pray we find it. The stupid thing is, is that there's no cell, so there's no way to tell the map, and it can't load. So we're heading into the woods to just look around and see if we get lucky. If the drone went down somewhere where we can actually see it in the forest. One in a million, but uh, it's worth trying. Taking our bear spray because we are in grizzly country. And uh, even if the drone is broken and we find it, uh, we will want to get our hands on that footage because that was. That was uh, good footage, but yeah, we're going to do some hunting here and see what we come up with. We would take Lando and he would actually probably increase our odds, but. Uh, there's a warning sign saying, keep pets on a leash. There's, there's an active trap line here, so we don't want Lando stepping on the trap. There we go. Nice. Let it burn. Don't touch it. Just let it burn. Ouch. Mm. Still going. Leave it. Nice, now most of the sticks are on fire. Hey, let me see your bear bell, boy. What did you get for your birthday? A bear bell. Woohoo! You see what that is? Just so you don't scare them. Grizzly. If they hear you coming. All right, here's the plan. We all sat down and got over the fact that we just lost another drone. <laughs> ah, it just threw an entire monkey wrench into our plans. But we were going to camp here by that beautiful river the Kootenai River but we thought mm. I mean I used to be in the lawn mowing business and if we lost or broke a say a, a lawnmower or a trimmer or a backpack blower you can't just say well I'm not gonna buy another one we're just gonna keep working you you have to replace the gear as painful as that is especially twice in the span of about two weeks so or less <laughs> but um, I mean in life you get knocked down sometimes and things happen to you and you only have two choices you can either sit there and complain and roll over and die or you can just get up and say well we got to keep going so financially it's a big hit that's four thousand dollars of equipment lost and now has to be replaced 
that's six thousand bucks we don't make six thousand dollars on on videos um to to pay for that so it's it's a big financial hit it's a big blow because we really also the card up was almost full of just all our footage from yesterday and last night and we had two episodes on there we um that we were so excited to share with you anywho they're gone we do have a bit of the footage on other cameras so we'll, we'll piece together a um uh an episode for you but uh we sat down and we said we're gonna choose the positive side of this and we're gonna just suck it up. We have to go and buy another drone, um, but we're in the middle of the wilderness here. So it's a day's drive back to that other camp. We're gonna go back to there and it's a, a day's drive to civilization where we can um, order a drone or go pick one up or something. And then we're gonna get back in the saddle and we're gonna redo our footsteps because we, we do have time. We're on our way back to Ontario, but we're not in a huge hurry. Um, just because it's still cold back there, the lakes are, are melted off. We could get in, but it's, you know, uh, there's no big hurry to get back. So, so instead of camping here tonight, we're going to start heading back towards civilization. So we're, even though we had almost set up, the tents weren't up, but we had everything else unpacked. We're packing back up. Um, we're going to go back, spend the night at that camp we were at last night. The next day, go into town and then, uh, we'll keep going. But man, what a bummer. I mean, even if I found the drone crash and it was broken, like the last one, at least we could pull the data card out and rescue all those awesome memories. But um, that's the painful, painful part is uh, losing the memories, but we always got them up here and we'll share, we'll try to piece together a good video for you. Ninety-nine percent went right, but then the one. The day was is... great. It's just when all your footage and your second drone in two weeks drops out of the sky and you can't find it. Two new drones lost in as many days. Oh, painful. Mm -hmm. He's so happy to be out here. Yesterday, in the footage we lost, um, we got here, he jumped out of the Jeep and just started running. He's so happy to be out of quarantine, just like we were. Kids were playing in the forest and making little forts and the boys found this stuff called the beards, what, what is it, something, old man's beard lichen, and they made themselves mustaches. They were just playing like kids again. Uh, you. You guys watching are probably just can't wait to get out of quarantine. Yeah, we spent a month there and then got here and just acted like little kids. 
and uh, I can't wait till it's all over and you guys can get out here too. But we lost all that footage, so. It's a great ox. Comes with the front runner kit, I'll show you. Yeah. And then we just have a bolt that screws on there and off you go. It's pretty handy. Another question we get asked a lot is what's up? Where where do I get that uh, fire reflector that you guys always have in your videos? Well, it's called the original fire reflector you can see here and it's made by MC Ranch Overland. Their, their website is uh, being developed right now. It should be out in a, a week or a couple of weeks. It's all been slowed down by everything going on in the world. but. That'll be out soon and then you'll be able to buy them online. But in the meantime, you can follow the inventor at uh, Instagram.com slash MC Ranch Overland or just go to at MC Ranch Overland. I'm going to show you how this works. This is something uh, that once you have it, you want to use it all the time. We definitely use this every night. It, it's got a little bit of weight to it. I actually don't know how many pounds, but I'll find that out for you. Or you can ask um, when you get... To MC Ranch, but it's in a nice package here. So this nice bag uh, for when you're storing it in your vehicle. And as you can see, it's very—it's only about uh, an inch thick when it folds down. And so that slides. We just slide it in beside our fridge, and it takes up no space at all. And then it folds out just like this. And you create a bit of an arch. If you're going to be sitting over there and it just makes it reflects back on the people when you're sitting there at a campfire at night uh, the light reflects on the faces so it makes a real sense of community it reflects heat back on you so it makes your fire way more efficient and it's also a wind blocker right now we don't have any wind but um, if the wind picked up going that way we'd turn the shield over here it's great on the beach uh, we're going to use it up north at the lake where we have wind coming off the lake all the time one of those things you know once you uh, have a fire with the shield you almost don't want to go back to just a regular fire so the kids were out hiking in the snow yesterday their boots and their socks were soaked so you can just uh it kind of you get the radiation from the fire but also from the shield and we laid wet socks over this and they dried up nice and fast so multi-purpose uh, piece of equipment. We love it. Thank you. Good boy, Lando. You ordered a double double. Thank you, Mom. Good morning. We are back at the same spot we were at um, yesterday, kind of starting over <laughs> after that disastrous drone um, crash and the loss of all of our footage. But we're um, having a coffee here, having a reset kind of family meeting figure out what we did wrong i think everybody dreamed the same dream last night yeah. going oh what if i had only emptied the card the night before what if we had landed the drone a bit earlier because what happened is the phone it operates um on three different batteries you got the battery that flies the drone and that was fine that one was fully charged you have a controller and that one was at about 17 percent and then you have to put a, a phone in when the phone has an app on it that flies the drone and the phone was really low and so we thought let's just quickly get it up there and um get to capture some video by the river and what happened is when it was way up high the phone died so now all of a sudden you can't see where you're going you can't control the drone anymore typically it would land itself which and, to, and often it'll go back to where you took off, but it landed itself somewhere that we couldn't find. So it could have landed in the middle of the river for all we know, or in the forest somewhere. But anyway, um, I think we all dreamed the same dream of what ifs, coulda, shoulda, wouldas. And uh, now we're gonna 
kind of reboot, replan, uh, reset our schedule and uh, put this behind us and start over. So it's gonna be a fun day. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road.